to your mic you know this song is it means so much as I was standing there God began to sp speak to me and he said to me Glenn there is so many dimensions and levels and layers to worship in the Old Testament there was about seven that they could define and they couldn't even give just one name for the word worship and, and the reason why I love the name of tonight so much is because it's called an intimate night. You see, you cannot go to the final level of worship without going through the stages. And you cannot try and skip and jump through your worship. You need to go through the process. It's a time issue. It's a, it's a thing where you have to tarry and wait. Now the penultimate place of worship. It's a place where a lot of us struggle to get to because we don't like it we feel like nothing is happening when it's like this it's the stillness it's the silence it's the quiet but you see in that place where that that penultimate place of worship where it's just still where it's just quiet what you are doing is letting a platform come forth and you're saying behold Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. This might sound like a funny example, but that's why in the Bible you see Genesis opens with 50 chapters. By the time we get to Jude, there is one chapter. Because by the time you get closer to God, you do less talking and you do more listening. And that's why when we open the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation starts with Jesus talking. I don't know if I'm speaking to anybody, but this place of intimacy is a place where you allow Jesus to talk. So we're going to sing that song one more time and we're going to sing it from a place of stillness. You can take your seats and Becca's going to sing it, but we're going to sing it from a place of stillness. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is 
worthy enough worthy enough to break the seal worthy enough to stand in the gap worthy enough to stand as champion behold oh Jesus oh Jesus behold we don't deserve this honor Lord Worthy are you, Jesus. Jesus. Father, you deserve the praise. we just commit our Lord, ourselves into your Worthy hands. Is your name. We know that we are not worthy, but we just pray that we might be acceptable. Acceptable enough to worship you. For that is the reason why you gave me breath in my lungs, God. To be in this posture of a worship, Jesus. Lord, this clay vessel can do nothing unless your breath lives within me. And I just pray that for the rest of the time that we are sitting here, for the rest of the time that we engage with your person, you will just do something amazing, God. I even see the healing power coming over this place, God. I see God right now. He is, by the, by the time this night ends, God will heal somebody with diabetes. Generational diabetes is ending today in the name of Jesus. I see somebody being healed of PCOS right now in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, by the end of tonight, as your word comes forth, you will heal every disease, Lord. I declare it and so shall it be, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. And all the church will say, Amen and Amen. Amen. You can clap for Jesus there. You can clap. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you so much. Wow. Wow. Well, we are at Game Changer 2021. And this is day three. Day three, like day three already i don't want it to end this is this has been so amazing the opening night we had pastor kofi all the way from canada you guys better make noise because he could be watching right now you guys better make noise for pastor kofi and then we had amazing amazing time yesterday morning with evangelist isabella grace she she was absolutely amazing and then in the evening guys whoa <laughs> If you were not there in the evening, you better go back and watch it because in the YouTube there will be glory. So, yeah, I, I want you to give a massive shout for Minister Elizabeth. That just, wow, the word was absolutely amazing. And then today, what can we say about today so far? Wow, 
a live worship boy can i can i i don't know can i can i wrap them up and just take them to my church i need them i need them and then we had the amazing temi doyan guys a prophetic singer don't take her for granted don't take her for granted and then guys oh the forerunners the people that came before us and are still doing it and still laboring and you guys you have to honor these people because the things that they do and 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 this man guys don't don't think he's just he just comes in takes a, a mic and starts singing this guy has so much wisdom i spent about 15 minutes with him upstairs and i feel like oh my where have you been like i need you in my life and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that one day he's going, no, not sure, I'm certain that very soon he's going to be asked to come and speak and not come and lead worship. He's going to come and preach because the wisdom in this man is amazing. Guys, give it up for Emmanuel Smith. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. And then somebody that, that, that has experienced all seven levels of worship, every dimension of worship, she, she, she's gone, come, gone, come, just, just, just as she pleases. But this lady is, like in this generation, is a gem. It's a gem, and we cannot take these gems for granted. Guys, make some noise for Becca, folks. Wow, wow. Um, I bless all the leaders of Alive Church. I bless you all. I, I bring greetings from my church in East London, International Praise Center. Um, but we don't just have the forerunners that came before us. We have the mothers and the fathers. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Yesterday, yesterday, there was four panelists, but it felt like there was one. They felt like there was one panelist because all the panelists were listening to this one panelist. We, we, we were eating like good food that, on that stage. Guys, if you do not know Pastor Pat and you've never seen a ministry of Pastor Pat, you better make some noise right now. Wow. Pastor Pat, I honor you so much. I honor you so much. Now, something I've, I've come to quickly understand and quickly acknowledge is, is that there's certain things that you just cannot receive without certain principles and things that you go through. You have to, stuff like, stuff like um, the windows of heaven being open, it's not by the commanding of your prayer and the decree and another. it's simply by obeying the word of God, which is to tithe. Stuff like these are not things that you can just, like, just happen. It's principles that have been set in place. And there's a principle that God placed in one of his commandments when he said, honor your mother and father. Now, you guys are sitting under an anointing, which is not, it didn't just come, it didn't just happen. This anointing has been worked on. It has been prayed through. I was speaking to Pastor Pat yesterday, and she said it would be 25 years tomorrow, uh, next year. 25 years this exalted altar has been being built and being raised and it's been done and if you guys don't stand up i'm going to stop preaching it, it, it has been done by none other than pastor leke and pastor bond sanusi guys you guys can do better you guys can do better you guys can do better thank you so much thank you so much Thank you for allowing me to stand on this altar. So now can we get to work? Yeah, we can get to work. All right, cool. I want to begin by saying that there are two types of people that are going to be listening to me today. There's going to be two types. And these two types are not just listening to me today. They're two types that you'll find every Sunday service, every worship service, every service that you go to. Two types of people. The first type of person... It's somebody that comes to hear the word. That has come to hear the word. Or somebody that has come to offer a worship. So, so something which is just, they, they just, just come to hear the word. The word was good. It was good. It, we, we heard it. I want to digest it. Take it home. Happy days. And then the second type of person that comes in is a person that hears a word. Now the difference might be very small to you, but the difference is massive to God. 
people that have come to hear the word is people that just, you know, they go through the motions of Christianity. They go through the routine of Christianity. People that have come to hear the word, they've just come, worship, word, offering, home time. And they're okay with that. But the people that have come to hear a word from God are the people that are hungry and know that if the word doesn't come, they cannot leave. That's the people that have come to hear a word. So I want to submit to you and ask you, which one are you? Which one are you? Are, are you somebody that wants to hear the word or somebody that wants to hear a word? Now, they, they, this might shock you. The, the, the word that you might receive from God might not come from the pulpit. The word you might receive from God might come in the worship. And you guys may not like this, but it might even come in the offering. By the time you guys, some of you guys have left, it might come in the benediction. My pastor always says to me, Glenn, even if you just come for the benediction, come. Because even in the benediction, there is a word for you. And I, I, I want, I want, I'm trying to talk to people that are hungry for a word. They're, they're tired of living the way they are, and they need a word. Somebody say a word. A word. A word. And I'm in the book of Hebrews today. The book of Hebrews in the chapter number one. And from verse one to three. That's my primary scripture and I've got a secondary one. So I would like you to turn there with me. Is everyone in the book of Hebrews? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. And the Bible says, I'm reading from the New King James Version. The Bible says, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to our fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the word uh, the worlds, who being in the brightness of his glory and in the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Say amen. amen. My second scripture we're going to go to the Gospel of St. Mark. In the chapter number four, from verse 10 and 11. But when he was alone, those around him with the 12 asked him about the parable. And he said to them, to you it has been given to know the mystery. Somebody say mystery. mystery. That had no revival in it. Say mystery. mystery. Mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in parable, parables. So that seeing they may not see, um, seeing they may not perceive, sorry, and hearing they may not understand. For this very reason, for this scripture alone, I have entitled this message from God, Let Them Hear. Let Them Hear. I'm not going to lie to you, it might just be a little bit like this throughout the message, because this message is a rebuke. They don't like that R word, Becca. They don't like it. The message is a, a rebuke, but it's not just a rebuke, it's a realignment. Because we cannot rebuke, we cannot chasten people if we do not know how to realign them. So I'm going to speak for, they tell me I've got 30 minutes left. I don't know how 15 minutes vanished, but glory to God. And we're going to talk about what God wants to say. Let me pray quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity this privilege of standing in your presence of oh father we just pray that as we go throughout the, the the journey of hearing what you want to say 
you will just come and use me as a vessel. I'm only a glove to you. I'm only a clay to you. Use me to minister to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you a funny little story. This, I hope it's funny anyway, because if it's not funny, just pretend to laugh, okay? I want to tell you a story. So, a couple months ago, I had the privilege, the absolute privilege and honor of stepping into another level of my ministry, which um, I believe it, it shouldn't be taken lightly. It was a commandment from Jesus Christ that we should do, and I, I, I finally had the opportunity to do it. And I got to share this moment with a lot of people, and it was to baptize them. For the first time, I baptized six people. And th this, was, this was an amazing experience, something that I recommend everybody to do. Because I, I know Alive is in the business of baptizing people. And if you want to get baptized, speak to the leaders. You guys can sort it out. But it's an amazing, amazing experience. And I thought this amazing experience doesn't just need to be a spiritual one where we come in the heavens part. Let's actually make something memorable. Let's, let's have a token that they can take away. So I thought, cool, let's, let me give them a t-shirt, a massive t-shirt, a t-shirt that says baptized on it. There's nothing like a, a good token than a t-shirt that says baptized. Yeah. It said baptized, it said disciple of Jesus, and it said Matthew 28. I loved it. I thought this was the best design I ever did. So I, we printed it out, gave it to the people that got baptized. And after the baptism, they all wore it. We left. We took pictures. Happy days. I got in my car. For those that have been in my car before, you know, one of the things that I'm spiritually fighting is my road rage. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My road rage. I, I, some people were shocked. Me. How did you get a license? It doesn't make sense. So I got in my car and then I'm driving and driving in East London isn't easy. Like you need to, you need to, you need to be prayerful to drive in East London. So we, I was driving in East London and then there was this Uber driver driving next to me. And there was a, there was a lane that goes straight and a, a lane that goes straight and right. So I was in a lane that goes straight. And this Uber driver thought, wait, I'm in the wrong lane. He wants to come into me. So I'm driving, 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 doing my thing. He didn't indicate, he didn't nothing. Turn into me. Oh my gosh. I literally turned and I almost went up on the curb and hit some civilians. And I turned and I broke. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I almost lost my salvation there. <laughs> I, I, like, I promise you, that, that, that situation there, I started looking for things. What can I use to smash his window? I, I, need, to, I need to show this guy that I'm not East London, I'm from South. So, so I, I began to look for things. I was like, no, I'm just gonna go out, tell him my mind, open my door. And as soon as I opened my door and I, and I went to give him every word that I knew in a dictionary that wasn't of God, I, I, I literally, the Holy Spirit said, look down. I said, look, look down, baptized. I was like, oh man. And the guy was like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I said, oh, it's okay. It's okay. I got back in my car. I even let him go in front. And then I carried on going. <laughs> and although that's a funny story, I, the Holy Spirit told me so much with that story. He really ministered to me. For example, he asked me, when you take your t-shirt off, what is your statement of me? He asked me, once, once the t-shirt comes off, what do people recognize your discipleship by? And he said to me, ended that, that, that segment of his conversation with me by saying, wear your t-shirt all the time. I was like, I can't wear this t-shirt all the time. And then he took me to John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35. And he says, a new commandment I give to you that you should love one another as I have loved you, that, also, um, that you also love one another. By this, you, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciple. So the t-shirt that we need to be wearing is the t-shirt of love. In that opportunity, I could have chosen hate. I could have chosen violence. But it wasn't the t-shirt that saved me, that the, the physical t-shirt. It was the spiritual one. I had to display love. 
So that was one of the examples that the Holy Spirit used. And I, and I really love these life lessons. You know, reading the Bible is amazing. I, I love journeying through the scriptures. But there's some things that you just have to experience. Has anyone experienced things? The, the God that we serve is a God that experiences. He, he literally wanted to experience what life would be like in a human body. He is a God that appreciates the experience. You can come and know all the theology in the world, but God is a God of experience. And, and the thing about this generation is that we have learned more how to explain God than to encounter him. We, we can explain God from A to Z, but when it comes to encountering, we go on our phones. We, we don't want to go, we don't want to press in in worship because we don't, well, we're scared of that encounter. Well, as long as I can explain God, that's okay. I want a God that can encounter every single day. I don't need to wait for Game Changer 2022 to encounter him because if he's, a, if he's literally what Emmanuel Smith said, if he's not going to come down, then I'm going to go up. We need to be hungry for the experience of God. Everybody's got three ways to do this and five steps to do that, but they have not experienced God. And the Holy Spirit taught me through this experience so many things. And when he finished teaching me these things, I just began to sit there and worship. Like I just began to cry. Literally, there was tears in my eyes because I thought, God, why are you so good? Not because of what he said. That was amazing. I've got that in my notes. But the fact that he spoke. He actually spoke to me. Wait, God. The last time, the, in fact, the first time I saw you speak, a universe was formed. And next time I saw you speak, there was a flood of water all of a sudden. The next time I saw you speak, you parted the Red Sea. The next time I saw you speak, that there came a, a, the Holy Spirit came inside of Mary. Every time God speaks, something happens. So why did you speak to me, God? Isn't it amazing that we serve a God that actually speaks? He's concerned about the things that we do daily. He could have let me go and smash somebody's window, but he said, no, Glenn, that you are my son and I need you to represent something greater than your emotion. And he said to me, he, he literally said to me, no, no, he didn't even say to me. I said to myself, God spoke to me. God, you spoke to me? And this is where the book of Hebrews begins. Can I get up on the screen? I want to work through the screen. This is where the book of Hebrews begins. It says, God that spoke in times past. We cannot neglect the fact that God speaking is a big deal. We must acknowledge that God speaks. Speaks at various times about various things. And the book of Hebrews is an amazing, amazing, amazing book. Very different to a lot of the other books that we read. The authorship is unknown. And I'm not going to try and convince you about who I think wrote it because I think it's irrelevant. If it needed to be there, it would be there. And I think there is actually a power to it not actually being there. Because then we focus not on who it was written by, but who it was written to. And now, the book of Hebrews was a book that was written in the first century to Jewish Christians. Jewish Christians that were struggling with their faith because of the persecution that was coming upon them. That was the first reason. The second reason why is because they were Jewish before. And the Jewish community began to give resistance they began to tell them why this, this person called Jesus that came was not the Christ that meant, was meant to come. And they began to use their own scriptures to try and explain it. And then the writer of Hebrews said, the scriptures that they are giving you or the, 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 the writings that they are talking about, I can use those same writings to prove why this is Jesus. That's why he says, for example, in Hebrews um, um, chapter 4, he says, um, he or she, we don't know, says that... Um, in Hebrews chapter 4, the word of God is living and alive. Because they were saying, well, this is the written word. And he was saying, no, the written word is actually alive. And then we go on to Hebrews chapter 11. He's talking about faith. 
and they, they used my father Abraham. Well, she said, Abraham was talking about Jesus. At every stage, Hebrews chapter 9, they were talking about the tabernacle. They broke down how the tabernacle was Jesus. I think this is an amazing book. And the Jewish community was pressing in. And these Jewish Christians all of a sudden began to feel some type of, they wanted to give up. This was getting too hard for them now. And the, the, the person that wrote Hebrews found it appropriate to write to them. That's the kind of person I'm trying to speak to today. I don't know. I'm, maybe I'm the only one that has ever found the Christian walk hard. Am I, am I the only one? This thing is hard. They, like, there, there is so much to think about. One minute I have to think about my character. Next minute I have to think about prophecy. Next minute I have to think about leading worship. Next minute I have to think about my career. Next, there's so much to think. I, I'm talking to those people. Those people that are overwhelmed not by the troubles of life, but they are overwhelmed by their Christianity. Can I, can I, this isn't the subject that they like to talk about. Because they make you think that Christianity, yeah, you just have to do this and you just have to do that. And you just, it can be overwhelming. And to come out of the world into this, this spiritual life, it's, it, it, it's so, it's so fast paced. That's the right word, fast paced. And that's who I'm talking to. And like, unlike the other books, Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews found it necessary to not start it with an introduction. Paul's epistle said, uh, uh, the greetings, da 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 da, and he, he, he introduced himself. Even Luke introduced, um, to, I'm writing to Theolopolis, and, and everybody found it necessary to introduce themselves. But the writer of Hebrews didn't find it uh, appealing enough to introduce himself. He opened by introducing the person that has the answer. <laughs> I believe that in the church today, we have got too focused on what we are doing. And we haven't focused enough on what God is doing. The Hebrew writer said, God in times past and in various ways spoke through his prophets. God. They, they, they were turning to the Hebrew writer and they said, do you have the answer to these questions? And he said, no, God. God. And in this book of encouragement, he was speaking to people that were discouraged, people that were hurt, people that were being persecuted. He found it necessary to open with God. Today, I'm not coming to give you a, a motivational speech. I'm not coming to give you a, a Bible verse that you can go home. I'm coming to give you God. Literally God. An intimacy with God. Because I don't have the answers. Just about four or five years ago, I was a mess myself. So how can I give you the answers? But God. And he spoke to me. He spoke to me. Something else that I quickly realized is that this thing that we now sit under, this, this, this the anointing of the Holy Spirit that we sit in, there is a level of responsibility that you must carry if you want to hear the voice of God. Some of you guys may not like this, but the reason why you are not hearing the voice of God is because you do not know how to steward the word that he will give. There has to be a stewardship, that, a maturity of carrying God's word. Paul literally said there are some revelations that I could never speak about. Because if I spoke about them, it would be too unlawful for me to talk about. There has to be a level of maturity and a responsibility of carrying God's word. Because with God's word comes a burden. And if you aren't ready to carry that burden and run, God's not going to speak. Because what did I say? If God speaks, things have to happen. Are you guys with me? And that's why he said that I cannot do anything unless first revealing it to my servants, the prophets. Because God has to communicate his thoughts. And that's what he did at the beginning of time. He thought about let there be light and then he spoke let there be light. There 
has to be a reverence of God's word. There has to be a reverence of hearing God's voice. It's not something that we should take lightly. It's not something that we should just throw here and there. God said, God said. There has to be a maturity. And I believe today in this moment of intimacy, God is bringing us to this level of maturity. I'm talking about something called communication. Communication. And the writer of Hebrews knew and understood the importance of this communication. We need to be able to communicate to God to a place where we are able to provoke him to do things. His presence is accept, uh, accessible. His word is always accessible. His word is always there. But we need to be able to be responsible enough and have the fear of God enough to find his word. Now, this thing has to come with a level of fear. You have to have the fear of the Lord to hear the word of the Lord. Because the high priests, they went in to hear the word of the Lord, but they didn't come out. They literally had to have ropes tied to them. And when they died, there, there would be a bell that rang. And then they would have to drag their body out with a rope. But today, we can hear the word of the Lord and walk happily. We can hear the word of the Lord. You, you, you need to understand there has to be a reverence. When you hear the word of the Lord, there has to be a reverence. Somebody say reverence. Now, communication is something which is, is paramount. I thought I was a great communicator. I thought I knew how to talk to people. I thought I could engage people in my conversations and stuff like that. And then I got in a relationship. <laughs> Anybody that's in a relationship, you will know that communication is, is something which is key. Communication is something which is, which is powerful. Women require a lot more communication than men. I, I can go a day just saying good morning uh, and, and then during the day I'll say how are you doing and at night I'll call her. It's, and, and that's okay to me. But women, you have to tell them when you're going, who you're going with, why you're going, the amount of money you're going to spend. It's, it's, it's the communication that is required is, is so much more than men. And I thought, oh my God goodness shout out to my courtship partner if you know you know but but there has to be a, a, a communication is so powerful in building a relationship now i i didn't understand this you see i thought this doesn't make sense and one day i prayed to god and i said god why why is it that she is so adamant on me communicating with her. And the Holy Spirit was bugging me. He's literally bugging me saying, Glenn, you have to fix your communication. I said, but I'm communicating to you, aren't I, Holy Spirit? At least I'm talking to you. And you know what he said to me? This changed my life. This, this wrecked my life. He literally said to me, Glenn, if you compromise on your communication with people, you're going to one day compromise with the communication with me. Because if you can't communicate with people that you can see, one day, you're not going to communicate with somebody who you can't see. Let me tell you this, there is somebody watching me and listening to me right now. The reason why you're stagnant in your relationship with God is because of your inability to sustain relationships with people. You do not know how to speak and communicate to people, therefore, you, you don't need more money, you just need to, ha need, just need to learn how to talk to people. You don't need more, mir uh, more healing and more miracles. You just need to know how to talk to people. You need to learn how to communicate because there is power in your communication. You need to be able to talk to somebody and you might be jobless right now, but so you just talk to somebody. Don't say, because of your manners, I want to give you a job. Just, just because of how you talk. Communication is key. Communication is powerful. With effective communication, you begin to do things. And God is in the business of communicating. There is power in your speech and he reminds us all throughout his scriptures. He reminds us that our faith alone does not stand. But when faith is spoken, things happen. 
Some of you guys are looking at me like, Glenn, that's wild. I thought I just have to believe it and things happen. Let me show you scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. He says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what it is written, I believed and therefore I speak. And now we also believe and therefore we speak. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 11, um, Romans chapter 9, um, sorry, Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10. Literally, your salvation is based on your ability to speak. It's not me saying it, Romans 10. Romans 10 literally says that if you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Two scriptures wasn't enough for some people. So I'm going to give you a third one. Jesus literally said, Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. He literally said, so Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move, and it will move. We have been so caught up in trying to build our faith, but we haven't been caught up in trying to build our speech. You guys didn't hear me. We need to work in a place where we're building up our ability to speak. Our ability to communicate what we think. There is power in your speech. Jesus said if you say it, you, it will happen. You can, you can believe it all you like, but unless you speak it, it will still be, uh, it won't be, it'll be at its seed level. And the moment you speak it, things begin to happen. I want to speak to someone that it's time to open your mouth and speak to it. Speak to it because in your speaking to it, things will begin to shift. In the speaking to it, things will begin to move. He, Jesus said, speak to the mountain and let the mountain know something. That I carry power. That I'm a child of God. So when I'm going towards my mountain, I'm not saying, God, look how big my mountain is. I'm saying, mountain, look how big my God is. You need to be able to speak to it. Speak it. Some of you guys have had your mouth closed for so long. Today is the time to open it. And when you open it, things will shift. Is anybody with me? Say, so speak to it. You need to come to a place where you open the, the door to your closet. You go inside. You lock the door and you speak until something happens. You pray until something happens. The ability to tarry until something happens. I'm tired of preaching. Oh, it's okay to pray 10 minutes a day. God will do what he needs to do in that 10 minutes. I'm tired of preaching. I uh, hear preaching. Sorry, I don't preach this. But I'm tired of hearing preaching. It's okay to just pray, you know, five minutes in the morning and five minutes before you go to sleep. There is an essence of time that you have to understand. You have to be able to wait in that place of prayer. Bow your head and submit and obey until something happens. Some of you guys have had your mouths closed for so long. Open it today. If we're talking about intimacy, it's time to pray. You think intimacy is just coming and saying, whoo, whoo, intimacy, whoo. No, intimacy requires you to open your mouth. Open your mouth and speak to it. And that's why the devil is so adamant on trying to destroy your prayer life. Because he knows when you open your mouth, he's in trouble. He's so adamant on destroying your prayer life. He's so adamant on giving you distra distractions. He's so adamant on giving you temptations. Why? Not because you can, you can lose your faith in Jesus. No. He's doing it so that you cannot speak. He gives you fear so that you are quiet. Literally, the devil is, is attacking your prayer life. That's why your prayer life is so up and down. Because you, the devil has backed you in your place where you are actually scared to speak. There is a fear of prayer. You don't believe me, so I'm going to prove it to you. What do I even say when I pray? Oh, you guys are acting holy. No one's ever asked that question before. 
What do I even say when I pray? How, how, how do I even enter into the presence of God? I heard, I heard uh, uh, Minister Elizabeth talking about it one day and th I really want to do this prayer thing and I, I, I don't know, I can't do it. There is a fear to open your mouth. And that's why the devil killed all of the prophets. Because if there is a breakdown of communication, then mankind is in trouble. He killed the prophets. Because the prophets were God's means of communicating. But now we have an eternal prophet. And the Hebrew passage says, God that spoke in times past and about various things, spoke through his people, the prophets. But in these last days, he spoke to us by that sweet name, Jesus. He says at various times and about various things. But the problem is in the day and age that we live is that we need constant reassurance. God, various times and various things is not enough. I need specifics and exacts today. We need reassurance about everything. That, that's just how we live. We want reassurance. Let me prove it to you. Some of you guys, how many of you guys have asked, am I doing it right? You can put your hands up for this one because I, I want to see who's in this boat with me. Am I, am I doing this Christianity thing right? Am I praying right? Am I worshipping right? Because so, like, I'm, I'm doing it, but I don't seem to feel anything. Like, it, this is real stuff I'm talking about. I'm, I'm, I didn't come here to, I told you, I'm not coming here to pretend to you. This is real stuff. But something you need to understand is that when God speaks, things happen. That means God needs to be careful when he speaks. This is relevant because God will speak when it's necessary. God will speak when, he will speak every day to you about everything, various things. Uh, he will speak to you. If you go and seek him, he will speak to you. But something you need to understand is that when it comes to instructions of God, he will speak when an instruction is needed. Now, the thing about instruction is that there are two types of instruction. I'm going to finish up in the next five minutes, I promise. There's something about instructions. There are two types of instructions. There is a generic instruction and there is a specific instruction. The generic instruction is what God says to his people. The specific instruction is what God says to a person. Now, God generically said, go out into all the world and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That was his generic instruction. But his specific instruction would be, go into South London and build a church called a live church. Generic, specific. Are you guys with me? But the problem is, with our day and age, is that we are seeking a specific instruction, but we are not getting it. Am I the only one that's ever asked God, God, what do you want me to do? What is my purpose? And it seems like it's just, you know, when the, the tumbleweed is in the wilderness. But God seems to be speaking about everything else. But when I'm asking him about my specific instruction, it seems that there's nothing that he wants to say. Let, let me give you a key to access this specific instruction. Obey the generic one. Obey the generic instruction. But the problem is that this day and age, because of the lack of specific instruction, what we have done is compromise with the generic one. We hear the truth of God and we say, well, if it's in this context and if it's in this environment, then it should be a little bit different. Can I speak on something for a minute? And, and, and I really don't like these two words. Some of you guys may hate me because I know everybody in this room has probably used it before. This idea of personal conviction. Because personal conviction literally just tells me, well, it's my license to do what I feel to the limit that I know. But the problem is that the truth is not conditional to the environment that it finds itself in. 
It doesn't matter about your experience. It doesn't matter about what you've been through. The truth is the truth. And we try finding compromises with the truth and call it personal conviction. It's a feeling. If I haven't felt like it, you guys are acting holy, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove it to you. The truth is that we have all got a responsibility to witness about the gospel of Jesus. And to this day, I still find people, I don't feel led to speak to that person. What more, what more do you want? What more, what more of an instruction do you want? Jesus said, witness about me to everyone. I don't feel led to speak to that person. I'm, I'm shy. I'm... Open your mouth and begin to speak about the good news. The generic instruction, the specific instruction comes when you learn how to obey the generic one. And this idea of conviction, there is only two types of conviction spoken about in the Bible. The conviction of sin and of conscience and the conviction of righteousness. Let me give you something here. This might, this might even deliver somebody. The, sin of, um, the conviction of sin and of conscience doesn't happen to the righteous. Let me prove it to you. He said that the Bible says that he will convict the world of sin and convict you of righteousness. Now, this is what the difference is. The conviction of sin says, this is what you have done wrong. That's what the conviction of sin says. John chapter 8 says it, that when the, the lady that was caught in the act of adultery was thrown on the floor, and, and Jesus said, those who have never sinned before cast your first stone, the Bible says that they were convicted by their conscience. That was the conviction of sin. And that tells you what you have done wrong. Now, the conviction of righteousness says, this is how to do it right. And this is why it's, it's only relevant to the believers. Because the only way to do it right is when you look onto Jesus. So when you are feeling convicted, it's the conviction of righteousness. It's not God saying, you have sinned, so there is something wrong. He's saying, no, you have sinned because you knew better. And he's convicting you of your righteousness and not of your sin. Because in the eyes of Jesus, sin is dead. But when you understand that the Holy Spirit is convicting you of your righteousness, he's literally saying, you knew better. You should have done it this way. And that's why the prophetic is so important. If anybody's on the keys, you can help me now because I'm about to wrap up. The prophetic is so important. And God gave me this word of knowledge. He gave me this word of wisdom. And I'm going to read it. He said, so many of my children have called on other things and other people and other teachers and other instructors when I have commanded them not to. While I'm reading the rest, if you could put Matthew chapter 23, verse 10. I have commanded them not to. And that is why there is so much confusion in my church. And he finished by saying, let them hear the mystery of the kingdom. Let them hear the mystery of the kingdom of the kingdom neither be ye called masters for one is your master which is Christ he's literally saying don't look for anything else don't look for any other thing to be plugged into but there's only one thing you need to be plugged into which is Christ and he ended it by saying let them hear the mysteries of the kingdom and he took me to Mark chapter 4 verse 10 Mark chapter 4 verse 10 says Mark chapter 4 verse 10, um, in fact I'm going to read verse 11. To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. And when I began to stud study this scripture, I realized that this scripture was mentioned twice. In Luke. The second time was in Luke, Luke chapter 8. Verse 9 to 10. But I'm just going to read 10. And he said to you, it has been given to know the mysteries. This is Mark. 
but he says to you it has been known the mysteries of the kingdom I found this very weird one gospel says mystery singular the second gospel says mysteries plural now there is a sovereignty of the word of God which is not tampered with God's word is God's word what he has written was meant to be in purpose everything that was done even uh, grammatically is on purpose so there's not a mistake that one says mystery and one says mysteries so I had to ask the Holy Spirit why is one singular and one plural he said to me that the plural speaks of the multifaceted nature of my power the mysteries the different dimensions to God's power in the kingdom of God but he says the singular speaks of the person of the kingdom and he said to me Glenn let them hear the mystery of the kingdom we have been so focused and so infatuated by knowing the different dimensions and elements and things that God can do but we don't want to turn and face to the person that he is the person that was revealed in Jesus Christ can we come to a place where we are not seeking just the mysteries but we are seeking the mystery the person of Jesus And the mystery of the kingdom is hidden in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10. The mystery says, the Bible says, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together all things into Christ. Everything, everything in heaven and earth into Christ. So when we're talking kingdom, we're literally saying the kingdom isn't a place, isn't a destination, the kingdom is a person. So when he's saying you need to understand the mystery of the kingdom, he's saying you need to know the person of Jesus in the person of Jesus. The mystery of the kingdom. The reason why your Christianity is so confusing and the Christianity, it seems so overwhelming is because you have turned to everything apart from Jesus. You have turned to every sermon, you have gone to every church, you have gone to every ministry, you have been to every worship event. Just trying to, trying to find something that you can eat, something that you can hold on to. Because you were seeking the power before you sought the person. And I'm not saying that the power is a bad thing. We need this power. We need to be able to prophesy. We need to be able to move in miracles, signs and wonders. Those mysteries are good. But those mysteries are found when you know the person. The person of Jesus. That, you guys don't believe me because some people at the back are looking at me like, what's the talking about? Everybody knows this scripture, so I'm going to show you. Matthew 6.33 Seek ye first. Oh God, you guys aren't here seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness seek first Jesus seek first Jesus and all these things shall be added unto you he wasn't just talking about material things he was talking about the spiritual giftings he was talking about the prophecies he was talking about the miracle signs and wonders if you turn your face to Jesus and you say Jesus I look to you the author and finisher of my faith I need you Jesus I don't want the revelations of the mysteries I want the revelation of the kingdom can I get the revelation of the kingdom I don't know if there's two people just two people that want that revelation of the mystery of the kingdom the person of Jesus and that's why we are here we are talking about Jesus Jesus there's a mystery hidden in Jesus it's about the simplicity of the gospel I'm tired of hearing messages about everything else apart from the gospel. 
And for those that don't know the gospel, I'm going to give it to you in 60 seconds. The gospel is about a man that was sent literally as a son of God that was enwrapped in a body. And when he was enwrapped in a body, he was lived for 33 years. And then he climbed the cross and he looked at you and said, your sin is forgiven. Your sin is taken away. And now I stand in the gap as the shame carrier, as the sin bearer. And I'm going to give you my righteousness. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. On the cross, I displayed my love by my resurrection I displayed my power and now I give you my power for the same power that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that lives inside of me that is the sweet news of Jesus the simplicity of Jesus is what I've come to talk about that's all I care about prophecy is good signs and wonders are amazing we need them but they will come and Jesus said to me tell them to get plugged in to my person Elizabeth spoke, spoke yesterday about the source and I want to add to that the source is the person he is a person that lives inside of us and he has plugged you in he has brought you into fellowship with himself stop plugging yourself to every sermon on YouTube stop plugging yourself to every church and ministry and just find one and use that one to find Jesus and in that place that you find Jesus that the apostles did this thing they did this thing where they were able to do many signs wonders and miracles you can read throughout it in Acts but there is no one stage where they pray for power they prayed for a person in the Pentecost they prayed Holy Spirit come they asked for the person to come they didn't ask for the power to come but when the Holy when the person came the power came and they were able to do signs and wonders because they were focused on Jesus today is the day that you focus on Jesus with all eyes closed with all eyes closed I'm so over my time I hope you guys can forgive me I don't like doing this but somebody under the sound of my voice online or in the building you don't even know what I'm talking about but for some reason there is something inside of you that's drawing you now Jesus says who can know the Father unless I first call them that feeling that you're feeling is Jesus calling you he's calling you because he wants to know you more he wants you to know him more he wants to unveil the mystery, the beauty of the kingdom. Today is the day. You do not need to wait any longer. You do not need to hold on any longer. Today is the day that I want to introduce you to the person of Jesus. The person that you need to get plugged into. And if you are one of those people, like I said, there has to be an intentionality about speaking it. If you are one of those people that want to commit and devote their life to Christ and confess their faith in Him, in the room I want you to stand up and online I want you to put an emoji. Don't worry, nobody's looking at you. This is a time of intimacy. If you want to commit your life to Jesus today, I'm going to pray over you and I'm going to ask you to make your confession. Don't, don't repeat after me. I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to ask you to confess something after. Father, in the name of Jesus, the one they have signified to you that they want to know you, Lord, I just thank you for their life. The people in this room standing up and the people in online or oh father that put an emoji lord they want to know you 
I just pray for them right now that Lord the same revelation of God of your love that you gave to me you give to them take them deeper let them know oh father what it means to walk with God and I pray in the name of Jesus that as they make this confession they oh God will be saved alive church I don't believe in letting them do it alone so we're all gonna do it together and I want you to simply say I believe in Jesus there was no revival in that say it again I believe in Jesus that he died and rose again for the remission of my sins and now I am righteous and acceptable to home the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus amen guys make a give clap for offering unto them I just want to lead one more prayer I just want to give one more prayer and you can bow your heads at this one you can bow your heads you can help me as well drummer just begin to play something I want something in the bass something in the bass there's somebody listening to me that you have been plugged into so many other things you have been plugged into every sermon every preacher every ministry every church you go from here to there and everywhere but you have never really tried to plug into Jesus sound of heaven calling you to get plugged in if you know you're that person I don't want you to stand up but I want you to try and find space on the floor for your knees and go to your knees and say God I want to be plugged into you I want to be plugged into you I want to know the mysteries of your person or maybe you are plugged in and you want to go deeper I want you to go on your knees and just say God I want to go deeper with you I want to know the person of Jesus even more I want to know him even greater I want to acknowledge him even more I want to know Jesus first I don't want to know the pastor I don't want to know the ministry I want to know Jesus and through that everything else will follow somebody begin to open your mouth and say Lord let me know you more let me know you more let me know you more Jesus I want to know you more Jesus I want to know you more Jesus take me to the depth of your revelation Jesus is all about you plug me into you Jesus 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 Lord I am tired of looking for everything else this overwhelming sensation of Christianity Lord I don't want it anymore I want to know you I want to know you Jesus I want to know you deeper Lord take me deeper father let me know more of you come on somebody open your mouth open your mouth and begin to speak to him begin to speak to him it's about communication it's about your speech to him open your mouth and say Lord give me a deeper revelation I want to know you more I want to know the person of Jesus even more Holy Spirit begin to minister throughout this room minister throughout this place Jesus is about you all over online as well Jesus is about you Holy Spirit is about Jesus we agree with the Spirit of God to glorify him and as the instruments as the instruments minister to us everybody needs to go into that place of intimacy now that place of intimacy where you are the, 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 the desiring him and him alone oh speak to him somebody speak to him now here you go here you go here you go